So now, here we have a circuit. Um, this is just giving us the signal. What we're interested in is the output right there. If I dim the lamp enough, then one of the outputs goes high. And then if I turn the lamp off, the other output goes high and uh, lights up nicely. I'm gonna put the lamp at the brightest setting. I also have this alligator clip uh, cover right there. And uh, you just uh, clamp this open all the way and then you can slide it over there. But uh, in any case, that's the only way I can get this dark enough to uh, light uh, both LEDs once I get my aim right. Trying to aim through the camera, get way off. I can only get one off. Enough lights going through my finger right there where I can't get it dark enough to light both of them. But uh, let's get back to this. The outputs are low right now. When they light up, the output's high. So only one is high. Let's come to the schematic there. First off, a lot of people really hate this, I know, but uh, if the wires are not connected, they are connected there. If they're not connected, there's a little jump. So these are not uh, connected right there. Wherever they're touching each other, just uh, coming to a, an end while they touch each other, that is connected. So I know a lot of people want dots where it's connected. And then, um, you know, the only ones I think I have actually crossing each other are where there's jumps right there. That comes to a dead end. It's pretty obvious that it's connected there. It's not just floating in air. So, in any case, let's get back to it. We have reference voltages. So, currents flowing through these two red LEDs. That's all they're going to do. We're going to keep 5 volts across it. And um, for this light level, we want to keep uh, 5 volts. And uh, remember, each one of these red LEDs drops a couple volts. There's only 1 volt across the 100 ohm resistor. 10 milliamps of current. So, that's not crucial for this. Main thing is that the red LEDs have a 2 volt forward voltage. And they build up, when current's flowing through them, they build up that voltage across them. So we got uh, two volts right there, and then uh, four volts over there in relationship to ground. Leaving one volt across a 100 ohm resistor, as I said before. Basic uh, diode uh, or LED circuit stuff. So we got our reference voltage. They're going to the non-inverting input, and you notice the positioning right there. Whenever you're looking at schematics, Got to pay close attention which one's the plus, which one's the minus, because they can be uh, kind of located anywhere uh, if you really want to get serious. But normally the symbol kind of looks like this. Usually it's pointing, the arrow's pointing that way though. They're up and down. But uh, on the physical component, the uh, if you're using the LM358, and I think this is uh, typical, but I always check the data sheet for the component you're using. We got, uh, you got to power it. And then we got the non-inverting, inverting, and then the output. Not inverting, inverting output right there. So whatever it looks like on the schematic, you still got to wire the physical component properly. You got to put this connection to the non-inverting input of one of the op amps. And then the plus for the same op amp there, you got to keep them separated like that too. We got number one there and number one too. Number two right there. So thought I'd mention that before I forget. Now, neither output is high. So uh, let's look at why. We're getting our signal here. From the light dependent resistor voltage divider, we have the uh, 4.7K resistor right there. So you notice this point right here connects to uh, the light dependent resistor in between the light dependent resistor and the resistor right there. That's two other things it connects to. And then it also connects to the inverting input of both op amps right there. So that's all one connection. We got that jumper going to both uh, of the inverting inputs. It's touching the uh, middle of the fixed resistor because there's the supply voltage on the other side. I shouldn't say supply voltage. I should say ground. I was thinking of the negative supply voltage, positive supply, one of them. But I should just say ground because um, supply voltage is typically the, the positive one uh, when you're talking about it. So we got the one side of the light dependent resistor, positive supply, and then the other side over there to that jumper that same connection. As I said before, all of this is a one connection. And I think some uh, circuit software uses different colors uh, for different nodes. That's a node where everything is connected directly together. So we'll move on from that. I think I covered that enough. So bright enough light, you got, let's say five volts. Let's say it's so bright, we're, we're five volts, but we're above four right now. That's the main thing. So. 5 is higher than 2, 5 is higher than 4, 4.5 is higher than 4, 
4.5 is higher than 2. You get the point right there. So the output wants to be more like the non-inverting input than the inverting input. That's the main takeaway. So if this has a higher voltage, the inverting inputs have a higher voltage, both outputs will be low. They're basically connected to ground. That side of the LED is connected to ground. There's no voltage difference. LED stays off. Now, we start darkening this a little bit. You can see the 4.7K resistor and your sensitivity will be mainly adjusted by this fixed resistor. This is a variable resistor. It changes based on how much light is falling on it. When it comes to a voltage divider, the you know this will change the voltage but this will set that range of voltage for the given amount of light and um, so this is pulling the voltage down so if we get it uh, a little bit darker right there this will drop below 4 volts let's say 3.5 volts that's less than what we got at the this is inverting input than at the non inverting input so this will have the higher voltage, the output will be high, it'll connect to the positive supply as good as it can, it's not perfect, but um, connects as good as it can, and the LED lights up there. But that one does not, so let's just say we accomplished 3.5 volts right there. So 3.5 volts is more than 2 volts. So we got a higher voltage at the inverting input than our signal at the non-inverting input. So this is higher, output wants to be more like the non-inverting input. So the non-inverting yeah, non input is a lower voltage, so the output is low, as you can see there. But uh, I get the cap, because if I turn this off, you probably won't see the schematic, at least not uh, very well. Looks like the camera adjusts uh, pretty good though. But in any case, there we go. Now we got both lit up. So we have our two volts at uh, that. Op amp, and we know that one's four, even higher right there. So, got our two volts. We know that, uh, you know, this has quite a bit of resistance right there. So it dropped below two volts. Let's just say 1.5 volts. Um, just uh, say that. So 1.5 volts there. This is higher, two volts right there. High output, both LEDs light up right there. So I'm using 220 ohms to protect them because we're using five volts right there. Even though um, the output doesn't get the full five volts, so you can see these are brighter um, right there. They got uh, about 10 milliamps of current flowing through them. This, uh, I'm gonna guess maybe like five milliamps or something. It's uh, lower than um, what uh, you would expect because you don't get the full rail voltage. So here's uh, one test. I didn't know how much current I was going to uh, need so normally I limit the current to 20 milliamps of current and this says 8 milliamps current to be honest uh, maybe we are a little bit below 10 milliamps because of connection let me yeah that resistor was up a little bit so this is a cheap breadboard and it doesn't make great connections so once I push the uh, resistor down into the board more we got a better connection we got that 10 milliamps of current that we expect and uh, Sometimes it shows nine, and there we go. I already screwed it up somehow. Connection, so I uh, just be aware of that numbers don't line up perfectly, it's kind of an estimate. Um, so we'll get one of these to light up and see. Looks like about 17. So maybe we got about seven milliamps of current going through there. Six, 22. Yeah, it looks like about six milliamps of current approximately. Again, connections aren't that great. Um, but you do lose voltage at the outputs. Something to be aware of. So, in any case, uh, I explained this um, probably a lot slower than I should have. Um, but again, I intend these videos for absolute beginners. So, I'm going to mention stuff like the output doesn't give the full voltage right there. And uh, stuff like that. So, um, hopefully that made things less confusing, even though I went slow. Um, if you're reviewing these kind of topics or something, then of course you're going to want it quick. Um, so I make videos like that too. I, I mix them up. So make sure you watch them all. Thanks for watching. That's it. Check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen. And check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.